Okay, for this one, I'm going to do a little more explaining and not too much demonstrating. This image is the same as this image. <clears throat> little bit of refresher. When you see these lines here, they're not there to tell you to put a different blue here, a different blue there and there. They're lines to show you that starting here and up to here, you're going to start transitioning from one color to the next color. And by the time you get here, you should be basically into just the darker blue. So it's not just three lines of blue. It's just to gradually integrate in between these two lines in this space where you're going to integrate into the two colors. <clears throat> uh, this is a diagram for a birch tree. And the way you would do a birch tree, as you can see here, I have two lines of line padding, not just one. There's one up here because we're going off the trunk. But the main trunk of the tree should have line padding on both sides in the color that's going to be stitched. So this area here is all going to be the darker brown. So I would line pad in the darker brown. And then down here, I'm line padding in the cream white, off-white color. <clears throat> and then back to the brown. And then when you stitch this color here, you're going to stitch over the line padding. It helps to raise the edge, give you more of a rounded trunk. When you're stitching the two colors together, you will blend nicely. But first you do the dark little patches and then you do the main color of the trunk. When we're talking about the mountain here, you need to have done your background first and then you will stitch this. And this part of your mountain is going to be line padded and the rest is just wedge stitch and blending. Up here you have leaves that are done in the claw stitch. And the claw stitch is just a bunch of um, almost like zigzags but it kind of forms a, a little bit of a flower cluster. <clears throat> and in many cases you will stitch from this to this to this, to this, all in one without cutting your thread. So you stitch a bunch of these and then you make a stitch and you stitch a few of these, then you make another stitch and it just helps you move across the canvas. You always do the darker color first and then the lighter color second. Usually it's two, three colors and the lighter color is done second or third from dark to light in order to give you the darker stitches in the background and the lighter stitches in the foreground. Now the way to do the claw stitch is like this. So you do it as like a V, a V, another V, and you just pivot your edges. Then you do another stitch and you come down here and come down here and you move in clusters. Of course you're going to stitch this based on the diagram or your color picture that comes with your uh, your kit. So I'm going to show you now how to add in a little bit of the lighter color. And you want your stitches to overlap a little bit here and there. <clears throat> you want sky to be showing through because you want a light effect, but you also don't want the leaves to be standing on their own. So I would do this, come to here, come down here, come back to the middle, do that one, come back to the middle, and then cut. And then you can add a couple more here and there, of course, following your diagram or your color insert that comes with your picture. And of course, in some areas you will overlap the branch, in other areas you're just in the sky. Sometimes you don't even see a branch to attach it to. 
though that's because they're really smaller branches that would be uh, not noticeable or hidden and not necessarily stitched like this and then cut again and if you notice this area here this is where I did my seaming so then I know where to insert my branch.